Imagine a fine dining establishment with the best meatloaf recipe ever tasted, paired with the finest strawberry milk. Good news, that restaurant is real, and it's in Ohio. It all started back in October of 2019, when the now iconic billboard was erected. It reads, we only serve meatloaf and strawberry milk. Margie's Meatloaf Mecca, coming soon to Athens, Ohio, www.succulentmeatloaf.com. Meatloaf can be ordered moist, dry, or drier, while strawberry milk is available in both medium and large. Once the billboard made its way to the internet, the loaf really hit the dish. The Meatloaf Mecca went viral, garnering many positive reviews. My roommate and I were extremely hungover and needed a pick-me-up. Margie personally made our meatloaf and strawberry milk in front of us. Moist. Moist. For those of you who hate the word, don't even think of ordering anything but the moist meatloaf. I had to eat it with a spoon and straw. In fact, I chewed the strawberry milk. Ordered the driest meatloaf. Looked kind of like that jerky you buy in the snuff can. Must say it did the trick. However, the buzz isn't just online. Even professors at world-class universities have taken notice of this bizarre business. I mean, the concept is kind of a commentary on, like, drive-by American capitalism. Like, it's just so many bad billboards out there. You kind of don't know whether these businesses even exist. But here's the catch. Margie's Meatloaf Mecca doesn't actually exist. Except for the parts that do. It's time to cut this story open and see what's inside. tight-knit group of friends uh, that all went to Ohio University located in Athens, Ohio. And a lot of the pranks and shenanigans kind of started as a tradition when somebody was getting married. It was roughly five years ago that Margie was getting married in December. And a group of us decided to uh, all get together prior to her wedding, uh, right around October. And we really wanted to do something uh, that was I guess you could say up a notch, right, from from other pranks and scenarios and situations. You know, we just kind of looked at it and said, all right, what are we going to do? So we're just going to make up a business that Margie's going to create and somehow market it. And then it was like, all right, well, what's the most ridiculous combination of things you could sell? Like if you only sold two things, what would you sell with meatloaf? And it, we came up with strawberry milk. And that's really where it all started is we, we pulled together some money about 400 bucks to put up a billboard right along a main road that goes right into Athens from Columbus. And that was the road that Margie would travel to meet up with us. So I, Salmon texted me a picture of it and I thought it was just Photoshop. And I was like, oh, ha ha, that's random and funny, you know, great. And then they all told me, no, it's real. <laughs> and that's when my jaw was on the ground. Like, I couldn't believe that people spent hard-earned money on an actual billboard of this thing. <laughs> that's literally on the way to OU. I really, I just, I was completely shocked. And I think I just laughed for a few minutes straight and I couldn't wait to go see it. Naturally, the billboard became an internet sensation and there was an obvious next step, merchandise. It's t-shirts, sweatshirts, coffee mugs, hats, beanies. We sold over 600 pieces of merchandise on the website. <laughs> it's, it's wild. It's wild. Um, so whoever's out there has bought merchandise and is watching this, thank you. I think to this day we've donated close to $3,000 to the food pantry in Athens. After the merchandise sales started rising, Six City Marketing seized on the Meatloaf Mecca's popularity to launch another audacious gambit. There's a bakery down in Athens called Fluff Bakery. Um, ironically enough, in the building that we put the fake address of Margie's Meatloaf Mecca, they had a lunch special. It was like a 90, no, I'm not kidding. It was like a 92 degree day, incredibly humid, 
and they had a line out the door for people buying meatloaf. The rest of 2020 was relatively uneventful for the strangely successful prank. In 2021, the billboard moved from its original location to a highway linking Athens and Cincinnati. 2022, however, was a banner year for the restaurant. Uh, we got a banner on the women's soccer field, um, and we used social media to promote uh, the Ohio University women's soccer events. So the soccer team has been great. They are such good sports about the whole thing. The coach is awesome. The team is great. And that's just been such a blast. And I really, I truly can't believe when John told me that they were okay with this sponsorship. It's a genuine sponsorship. And when he told me that they were okay with that, I really, I was like, are you sure? And so the players are all like, oh my God, this is crazy. This is our, this is our big sponsor. This is somebody that really believes in us. Even Margie's come out to a game and it was really cool to see her and, and for her to see what, what her namesake is, is, is promoting. And, and it really means a lot to our players. So, the Meatloaf Mecca reached out to me. Is it, it was only a matter of time before they would, because I've been bothering them enough. Uh, and they thought, you know, since they're partnered with the OU women's soccer team, and because I'm a, a go cat, I'm a diehard cat supporter, uh, it was a natural pairing for me, no problem. Happy to support the gals. some students stole our banner off of the women's soccer fields. It might be too soon to talk about it. No, when I first saw that post on the Margie's Meatloaf Mecca Instagram, I thought it was a joke. Like, oh, they're just adding to the fun, like whatever. And then I think I was on a, I don't know if I was texting John or maybe he was in Athens or something. And he told me it was real. And I was like, are you kidding me? I was upset because I didn't steal it. Like me and my roommates didn't plot it. It was a sad day for us all when that happened. I respect that whoever took it waited until the end of the season to take it. I also think, that, I mean, that's pretty bold because you're crossing John Salmon, who clearly has shown that he is this master of pranks and has the these resources to to uh, to get these things done. So I, if he gets just wind of who did this, I uh, I don't I don't wish to be them. <laughs> it's been brought to my attention that somebody stole the Margie's Meatloaf Mac Gum banner off the women's soccer field. I'm not saying that the person who did it deserves to die But I think maybe they should pay with their lives Margie's Meatloaf Mecca still had some meat in its loaf as proven by the launch of a new product Margie's Strawberry Stout with 13% alcohol by volume Because I do all barrel-aged stuff, I, I made a really big beer and I felt like that made sense considering Margie uses three scoops of strawberry milk flavoring uh, for the strawberry milk. That's a lot. So I wanted this beer to also be a lot. So um, I was real happy with how it turned out. It's really big and sweet. Um, the strawberries there, uh, but um, not overpowering. Um, and yeah, I think it, it would pair best with the, uh, the extra dry meatloaf. The beer launched in July at Tony's Tavern to commemorate Ohio Brew Week. In November, Happy Hollow announced a limited rollout of the beer, bottled with a collectible trading card included. That card had a custom design made by Daniel's daughter. Looking back on everything, one question remains. What can we learn from Margie's Meatloaf Method? Best kinds of PR stunts or pranks gamify um, that experience, which, you know, encourages you know, more people to get involved and to more people to say, hey, did you hear about, you know, the succulent meatloaf website or, you know, a, 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 or just some of the catchphrases that they came up with. So I think that's probably why it was um, most successful. It's kind of a lesson that all marketing is, is real marketing. You put something up on a billboard or you make a website, then like it, it kind of exists, even if you don't intend for it to exist. It has real meanings and people respond to it. The success of the campaign was that Margie's been highly entertained by it. 
much to my chagrin, I think it's been successful. Um, but I think it just goes back to that kind of blend of just stupid and ridiculous and heart behind it. I don't know if that resonates with people. I don't know if it was the pandemic that helped kind of fuel some of that love. Uh, it's been a, a wild ride, so I'm ha happy to be part of it. On December 31st, 2023, the Meatloaf Mecca announced it had sold both the business and secret AOL meatloaf recipe to Lockheed Martin and would be shutting down its website and online store. Started as a prank, meatballed into something much larger than anyone could have expected. It's clear that the friendship and altruism that kept the idea alive are undeniably unique in an age of cruelty disguised as comedy. And as weird as it sounds, maybe we need more pranks like this. While Margie's Meatloaf Mecca may have shut down, it will live on forever in our hearts, minds, and meat sweats. Thank you so much for watching. Margie's Meatloaf Mecca has me hungry for the truth. Gotta be a sleuth Talking about a detective yeah. I do love meatloaf, but the shocking thing is I have never had strawberry milk. Like a baby tooth, yeah. Margie's meatloaf, Mecca has me hungry for the truth. Oh, yeah. And some meatloaf. When I fill out job applications and they ask me for previous experience, I just put meatloaf, strawberry milk. The only thing they serve except the strawberry, strawberry.